Hello there, welcome to our channel. We are excited to have you here. In today's video, we are exploring a topic that we believe will offer valuable insights and practical takeaways for you. Whether you are a new or a returning viewer, this video has been designed to inform, inspire and engage you. So sit back and relax, get ready to dive into some thoughtful content. Be sure to watch to the end and don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment. Let's get started. Tonight is very simple and that is I am afraid that most of you in this room and in this auditorium tonight and perhaps watching this program, you are going to add to the treasure and the wealth of the cemetery. And that makes me very sad. Because buried inside of you are dreams that you still carry. Ideas that God planted in your heart that you still haven't done yet. Paintings that you've been planning to paint and books you've been thinking about writing and paintings you keep procrastinating about. And what I'm so concerned about is we'll never see your painting. We'll never sing your song. We'll never read your book and we'll never oh, operate in your business and we'll never experience the invention that you keep procrastinating on. I trust that you will rob the graveyard of your treasure. Yes. I pray that you will disappoint the cemetery. I pray that when the, the mall gets your carcass, it will be empty. treasure. What do you call this massive treasure that's in every cemetery? It's called potential. Write the word down. Potential. Everybody say it. Potential. Say it one more time. Potential. Why is this called potential? Well, potential, I want to define it for you one more time. Potential is untapped power. Potential is unused ability. Are you ready? Potential is dormant strength. Potential is hidden power. Potential is all you could be but you haven't become yet. Potential is how far you can go in life, but you haven't gone yet. Potential is who you really are, but we haven't seen you yet. Potential is everything you could be, but you haven't become it yet. Potential is all you can do, but you haven't done yet. In essence, potential is never what you've done. Please make a note of that. Potential is never what you've done. It's always what you could do, but you haven't done yet. In essence, whenever you've done something, it's no longer your potential. Therefore, potential is everything that is yet unused that is still within you. I am convinced that God has buried in every human being all 5.2 billion of us treasure that is yet to be tapped. Let's put it this way. If potential is not what you've done but what you could do then whatever you've done is no longer your potential. Therefore, you should never be impressed by what you've done. Because if you are impressed by what you've done, it will stop you from doing what you could do. The greatest enemy of progress is your last success. The greatest threat to moving ahead is getting excited about where you are. Whenever you feel like what you've done is the best you could do, you just died. Come on. No matter what you've done, if it didn't kill you, there's more left. As long as you're breathing, God got something else left inside. Until you are gone, you're still pregnant. Because God sent you here and no human being came to this planet empty. Yes, sir. 
I repeat, no human came to this planet empty. Now, I want to talk to you about the best kept secret. And the best kept secret is a strange secret because only one person has it. And the secret is about you. There's a secret about you that nobody knows except the one who manufactured you. There's information on you that has been kept because if it was ever given to anybody else, they won't believe it. First, I want to deal with a little issue before I go any further. I want to talk about how to be set free so you can discover your secret. The key to freedom is knowledge. Just write these principles down. The key to freedom is knowledge. And the key to knowledge is truth. The key to knowledge is truth. And the key to truth is the manufacturer. I repeat, there's a principle. The key to truth is the manufacturer. Let's talk. The greatest enemy of man is not sin. The greatest enemy of man is not Satan. The greatest enemy of man is ignorance. Ignorance is the cause of all destruction. As a matter of fact, we blame so many things on this entity that we call devil that we've become irresponsible lately. We eat bad, get sick, and then blame it on the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Real talk. Come on. Ignorance is the major enemy of man. God says, my people perish, or they are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge and because they have rejected knowledge I must also reject them and they cannot represent me and then he goes one step further he says and I must also reject their children here's the point if you don't know anything and you teach your children what you know <laughs> then your children is as smart as you. <laughs> Write this down. All I know is what I've learned. Say it with me. All I know is what I have learned. One more time. All I know is what I've learned. Now you gotta let that sink in for a minute. No matter how many books you bought, you only know the ones you read. Don't look now if someone's looking at you. 
Some of you bought books last year and haven't cracked the pages yet. Yeah. And you show people your library and try and impress them with what you don't know. Come on You bought videotapes and haven't burst the plastic on it yet. You bought cassette tapes and haven't listened to them yet. You see, buying information doesn't give you revelation. Now here's what God says about that. He says, because you have rejected knowledge, I must reject you. It's impossible to reject something that was not available. Therefore, your ignorance was a decision. Half, no, 90% of the knowledge you need is right in your house in a book you never read. That's good. Every time you pass a library, knowledge incriminates you. God says you are perishing because you lack knowledge. So don't blame it on the devil. Don't blame it on your mother-in-law. <laughs> don't blame it on your teacher. Don't blame it on the school system. You don't need a teacher to learn. Oh, come on. Say something, Minnesota. Some of y'all blamed it on the education department. You don't need a professor to make you read a book. I'll never forget the day when I walked on the premises of the university I attended. I walked into my first class, freshman, and here comes this professor. And I was so excited, all my books, and I sat there ready, eager to learn. And I saw this great bank of reservoir of knowledge walk into the room. And I said to myself, I'm going to learn so much from this great man. And he stood there for five minutes and says, good morning. I'm glad that you are here today. Our course of study shall last for this semester. You have five books to read. Tonight I want you to take the first book, read the first five chapters, write a paper, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Where are you going? I just paid $2,000 to come to the school. Come back here, preacher. And he left. And I got mad. And I said, wait a minute. I just paid $2,000 tuition and another $1,600 for, for, for room and board. And I bought all these books for hundreds of dollars. And the man spent five minutes in the class. I went to the library and realized that I was going to be spending over $57,000 for someone to tell me, go and read a book. <laughs> Come on, clap. You know it's true. <laughs> Knowledge is the key to freedom. But the key to knowledge got to be checked carefully. I used to think that knowledge was power. That's not necessarily true. Because you can learn the wrong thing. Jesus said the only thing that can set you free is not knowledge, but knowledge of the truth. It's dangerous to learn the wrong thing well. Some people are experts in error. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> so knowledge doesn't mean you're smart, because what you may have learned may not be true. And the most dangerous thing for a person to have is knowledge that is erroneous that they believe is true. The most dangerous human being I've ever met is one who has zealous error. People with zeal who are wrong. And it's the cause of great tragedy in our humanity and in our history of man. 
Most of the problems in our past are results of zealous, erroneous people. People who had information that was erroneous, it was wrong, but they thought it was right and they were zealous. Hitler, for example, believed that everybody else was subhuman and the Aryan race was the only true human race. And that error made him massacre millions of people. The crusaders who were Christians were under an error and they killed thousands and thousands of people all over Europe because they had a theological error and tried to force people to come to Jesus with the sword. And then you used to preach against speaking in tongues and you used to rebuke people who did it and now you're doing it more than they. Yeah. Don't look at me so funny. Some of you used to have scriptures to prove it was from the devil. Look at you now. It's amazing what we do with error. We defend it vehemently. That's why Jesus said knowledge of the truth shall set you free. Not just knowledge, but the truth. Yes. Now I mentioned to you that truth, the key to truth is who? The manufacturer. What do I mean by that? The manufacturer is the only one who knows the truth about his product. Let me try it one more time. <laughs> the manufacturer is the only one who knows the truth about his product. Yes. Everybody else is experimenting. Yeah. Come on up. That's good. Everybody else is guessing. And everybody else has opinions. The manufacturer knows the truth about his product. That's why you shouldn't get information from anyone else except the manufacturer. Don't even believe the retailer because he's in business for sales. Lord help me tonight. That's why I don't trust humans to tell me who I am. Don't depend on customer's experience to determine the value of a product. Because some customers don't know how to use it. You all are slow here tonight. Me, many of us have literally allowed people to talk us out of good products because they abused it and it didn't work for them. Not because your marriage didn't work doesn't mean marriage doesn't work. Hello. You just didn't know how to stay married. You didn't follow the manufacturer's manual. You didn't follow the specifications. Hello, somebody. So if the toaster didn't work for you, that doesn't mean the toaster ain't no good. You just plugged it in wrong. Are you understanding me? The truth about a product is only hid in the mind of the manufacturer.